Now we have come to verse, chapter 11, uh, verse 34. It says, when they shall fall, they shall be helped with a little help. This is referring to the help that was given to God's people during the European Reformation. And the date for that is about 1300 into 1600. And then verse 35, And some of them of understanding shall fall, to try them to purge, to make them white, even to the time of the end. All right, now this we have come to what is called the time of the end, because it is yet for a time appointed. Now, when we find that there is a word like this for a time appointed, what is it that appoints certain times in Scripture? It is timelines that give you a time appointed for things to happen. Now, there was a timeline in Daniel 7, and this timeline said that the little horn would continue uh, for 1,260 years, days, years literal years. So now what was the date that that was appointed that that timeline should end? 1798. So where we see the words here, it is for the time appointed. We, you might like to write in your Bible 1798. That is the time appointed. And it calls it the time of the end. And that is why our pioneers always understood and referred to, uh, because of this verse 35, they always referred to 1798 as the time of the end. Now then, we come here, it says it is for a time appointed. Now, in 1798, which was appointed, where the papacy should be just... wounded. That's what it says over in Revelation, that the head would be wounded uh, with a deadly wound. Now we look at verse 36. Who was the king that did according to his will that caused the papacy to receive its deadly wound? Who was that king? Napoleon, yes. Now Napoleon wanted to become, uh, wanted his, under his dominion, that all of Europe and Russia, everything should be united into one great empire. He had desire to become a great world empire, but unfortunately, uh, he never was able to do this because he met difficulty in regard to a winter when he tried to, to carry on a campaign over in Russia, and finally he met his Waterloo. You remember that statement? All right, but this was referring to Napoleon here. Now you're going to say, well, where do you get this information? Well, the stories I have told you have all come out of Uriah Smith's book, Thoughts on Daniel and Revelation. You see, Uriah Smith understood this book and fit the prophecy with the history very, very well until he got up to verse 36. Now, the reason he could not go beyond verse 36 is because he was what we call a prisoner of history. You see, it's characteristic of prophecy that as it is fulfilled, then men recognize the fulfillment thereof. And so he could not look ahead of his own day. But as he goes, with a few exceptions, he... Get, did an excellent job all the way up here through verse 36. And so then it speaks of him. And uh, Napoleon will do according to his will. He shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god. Now, what, is, what was the religion or ideology of Napoleon and the government of France? What? atheistic. Yes, it was an atheistic government. You see, the French people were tired of being controlled by the papacy. In fact, I heard a radio announcer say one day, a certain museum has bought a letter that was written by Napoleon 
and they bought it for thousands of dollars. And uh, he said, this is a letter that was written by Napoleon to the Pope. And he said, I'll read some of it to you. And in effect, what he was saying was that, you see, the Pope did not want Napoleon to go out and make a great world empire. And so he was saying, no, you can't do that. No, you can't do that. And so Napoleon wrote him a letter and he said, in effect, you keep your nose out of our business or we will come over and take you off your throne. Well, the radio announcer said, imagine anybody writing a letter like that to the Pope. Well, yes, he did. And the whole government was tired of the papacy, tired of the popes. They were tired of religion. They didn't want anything more to do with God. They had a very bad representation of God by the papacy. And so they said, bring all your Bibles and we'll put them in the streets and we'll burn them. And so they burned the Bibles and they established the, an atheistic regime and it resulted in the terrors of the French Revolution. Well, it says here, describing atheism, he will magnify himself above every god. That's verse 36. He will speak marvelous things against the God of gods. He will prosper. All right, verse 37. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers. All right, atheism just threw over religion, and the religions that proclaimed the true God, they were just thrown away, and it says, neither nor the desire of women. Now, we have a book that is called The Desire of Ages, who is the book about? Jesus Christ. And every woman in Israel, if she were a good woman, she hoped that maybe she could become the mother of the Messiah. So the Messiah was the desire of women. And so this is says, what this says here is, neither shall he regard God the Father, nor Jesus Christ, nor Christianity, nor any God. He will magnify himself above all. Now, atheism was very slow growing at first. It was there in France, but it extended itself, and its ideologies continued to progress until by 1917 they reached full fruition by the Russian Revolution. And so the Communist Party was set up at that time with an atheistic ideology. And there we have a great kingdom that came into being. Now it says here in verse 38, but in his estate shall he honor the God of forces. Now what is the God of forces? It is the God of the military. In other words, when you put your faith in the military, that is the God of forces. So the communists, in fact, Stalin said in regard to the Pope, they reminded him, they said, you know, the Pope is over there, you'd better be careful. And he just said, oh, well, how many divisions does the Pope have? Well, of course, the Pope didn't have any divisions, but it says here that the communist atheistic estate would honor the God of forces, and they determined that they would become a great one world empire. Now I'm going to show you a map here that will indicate the extent of the USSR with its atheistic theology. We're going to look at the scope ideology. Uh, let us look at the scope of the USSR. Now we are dealing here particularly with the old world but the Soviet Union extended 11 time zones across here. That's almost half of the world's surface. Furthermore, up here is Alaska. And for decades, the United States never had all its planes on the ground at one time because it was pushing, and there's just a little narrow straits across here, the Bering Straits, and they could have come right across. And so there were planes always in the air, circling over uh, and keeping watch over Alaska, over the North Pole. Not only that, they were pushing in all directions. They were pushing against the 